Welcome, or welcome back to Orson Knits. November by the lake at my parents' house has been extremely beautiful, and I've been taking the chance to adjust my schedule to make the most out of the darker days now winter is truly on its way. Finding time for my projects between work has always been a balancing act, but I find I have so many ideas at this time of year, I hardly know where to start. With the Christmas lights going up and shops slowly filling with potential presents, I've been planning some videos and gift knitting for the next month, but before I get into making gifts, I wanted to finish the few items I've been knitting for myself, and it's these last pre-Christmas projects that I'm really excited to show you all today. Working from home has its perks, but I've been recently ensuring I make a little bit more effort every morning to choose outfits that are warm, woolly and comfy, but also a little bit more stylish. Before starting work, I get in a few quick rounds of knitting. This project is one that's been on my needles for the last few weeks, and I'm really, really excited about how it's progressing. This is my first ever jumper design, but I knew I wanted to play around with drop shoulder construction and a couple of different shades of mohair. The jumper that I've been wearing most of all this November is also a drop shoulder oversized one. It's my absolute favourite and probably part the inspiration for this pattern. This slowly growing project has initially been called the cloudy sweater but I think I've finally settled on the official name of the Claudia sweater. And that's because some people on Instagram told me that it looks like a cloud of fluff. After I read this, I was calling it Cloudy for a couple of weeks, but I prefer to use people's names for my knitting because I find that it gives each garment its own sort of character that the name evokes. So Cloudy soon became Claudia. This jumper is knit with one strand of mohair held with a gorgeous yarn, which is a blend of merino, mohair and alpaca. Both yarns are from Italian brands that I've been interested to try. The mohair is Lana Gatto's Mohair Royal in two shades, because the body is knit in this fluffy white and the collar and sleeves are in this gorgeous beige, which creates a subtle difference that I really love. It's a bit more noticeable in the sunlight, as you'll see. The main base yarn is a Lens du Nord Dolce Vita, which I've mentioned previously in my videos. I initially purchased a jumper quantity of this yarn to make a different garment, but I found that it looks a lot better when it's held with something as opposed to on its own, because when it's on its own, it tends to look a little bit thinner um, and just doesn't fluff out quite in the way that I had expected. The weight also didn't really match a DK, which is what it was supposed to be. I tried knitting swatches on 4mm and 3mm needles, but found that it looked much smoother and more uniform on the smaller needles. Here I'll show you a side-by-side -side comparison, just so that you can have a look. I would say that this yarn is definitely more of a fingering weight yarn, so I am happy that I went with the smaller needles and decided to hold it together with a mohair, despite the fact that it's made this project a little bit slower to make. Designing my first larger garment has been a bit of a challenge, but I've found it extremely rewarding. I'm trying not to rush it and make sure that I keep clear notes for when I write up the whole pattern. I'm trying to be a bit better with that, and I am confident that I'll put together some lovely clear instructions for anybody who's interested in recreating this piece. I have already um, skipped ahead with knitting the collar and the sleeves before finalising the body length, just because I've been so excited to see the two tones in their full glory. The final effect is quite lovely, and I am really pleased with the wide and comfy collar. I think that it really pulls the whole jumper together and it gives it a sort of polished minimalist finish. I also find this sweater is also a little bit reminiscent of the <laughs> voluminous 80s sports sweaters. It has a little bit of a sporty vibe because of the two tones, but I hope that this is a little bit more of a modern update with the cool neutral tones that I've selected for this. I plan to finish the Claudia sweater sometime in the next week, 
and would really love to invite any viewers to participate in the testnet if they're interested. The best place to find more information about this is, as always, my Instagram, which is where I post quite a bit more regularly than I do on YouTube. Although, I've got my fingers crossed that in December I'll be able to bring you quite a lot more content. I've got a little bit of a mini calendar all planned for the little projects that I want to make for December. And so, yeah, um, hold on and wait for that. I think it will be really fun. The next project I've been working on recently is my Brigitte bag by Gregoria Fibers. I feel like I've finally fell into a good rhythm with this lacework pattern and the body of the bag has knit up quite quickly after I did. However, the latter part of the pattern has been a little bit more challenging. I'm uncertain as to whether I misread the instructions, but something just doesn't seem to add up. At certain points I had too many stitches and the instructions seemed to advise I start lines in ways that just didn't correspond to where I knit up to. Despite this confusion, I managed to resolve most of the issues and it's finally done. So here it is in its finished state. And I have to say, I really, really love it. This is a pattern that captured me as soon as I saw it. I think Gregoria Fibers takes some of the most beautiful, just artful photographs of her designs. And this one really stood out to me. There's something quite retro and sort of charming about the lace design, which looks quite a bit more intricate than it was to actually knit up. Overall, I'm really happy with the final result with this knit, but I do think I have to add a few extra thoughts and tips for other knitters who are looking to make this. I will say that I think that the strap length that she recommends is just a touch too short. I extended mine by about 5cm and still find it just about fits under my arm okay, but anything shorter would have been difficult to use when the bag is full and all heavy with loads of stuff. I suppose this also depends on the type of yarn that you use, but considering I used a more sturdy yarn held double, I think that a longer strap probably would have been ideal. I also think that it has to be said that this pattern is not for the faint-hearted. The lace work, however, is not the reason why I would warn beginners who are looking to try this. It's because I found the instructions at the end of the pattern just slightly vague which meant I did have to rely on my knitter's instincts and the few pictures that were included in the pattern to understand what sides were what and where I had to place the handles, where the eye cord had to start and where it had to end. When you look at the pattern, it might seem like that would be fairly clear, but as somebody reading it, it wasn't quite as clear as I would have hoped and it did give me pause for a few moments. Um, luckily, I felt confident enough in what I was doing that I do think I've achieved a result that I like. The shaping at the top of the bag, which slopes up in a triangular shape, also a little bit tricky because this is where I seem to have too many stitches. But once I got into making the strap cords, um, it was all fairly straightforward. The eye cord on the handles does really tie the piece together and I think it will make the bag quite strong and resistant to everyday wear and tear. Because I don't know about you, but I'm so heavy on my bags and I do tend to just fill them right up and wear them constantly until they're almost completely worn out. Now, the struggle that I had doesn't change my mind about the fact that this is a truly stunning design, but I do think it's important to let some of you know about some of my minor foibles with it. I will also add that some of my issues were compounded by the fact that I was holding this yarn double. The string-like texture of it means that the balls were just constantly unravelling into a tangled mess, and I probably lost count of the number of times I had to rewind them. Even with my ball winder, it just wasn't fun, and I would chuck my project into its project bag and then bring it out sort of an, a few hours later and just find everything was a mess. However, an extremely helpful comment from a kind viewer saved me from a lot of trouble when I first started this piece. 
as I was finding the knit four together sections really really challenging and really tight and she recommended that I use a crochet hook which is an absolutely fabulous suggestion and I really just want to say thank you you saved me so much trouble and so much hand pain <laughs> all in all this is a really beautiful bag but I don't think I'll be rushing to cast on anything quite as fiddly for a while because I think my hands need a break from the stress and my brain just needs to work some simple stockinette. I haven't forgotten the fact that there is also another project which is languishing at the bottom of my knitting drawer and that is my gorgeous Oslo hat which unfortunately I still haven't been able to get the extra mohair for. I've promised myself I will eventually get round to completing this while it's still weather appropriate because we're having some gorgeous autumnal cool days here at the moment and I've been dying to wear a little pop of colour with some of my outfits. There's also one other project which some of you might be waiting for an update on and that is my gorgeous scout shawl. Now the last time I showed you some pictures of this I had made some good progress, but this month I've just felt like I haven't really been inspired to pick up this piece. Now this isn't because the pattern isn't absolutely beautiful and lovely to knit, but I just felt like my heart wasn't truly behind the colours I had spent ages selecting. Because the project is such an explosion of colour and pattern, it gave me so many opportunities to reflect on the shades I had selected as I added in a new section and I saw the different tones working together. So unfortunately I had to make the tough decision to frog it. Now despite all the work and the hours that I lost, I feel like I've made the right decision and I do plan to start over with more neutral colours, maybe sometime in the new year. However, it may have to wait until I've got some of my gift knitting done because Christmas is just around the corner and I have to say this is my favourite time of year to evaluate my stash and sort of gather together bits and pieces to create beautiful handmade presents. My knitting journey, as some of you will know, started with wanting to make some gifts for family and I always get really excited every year when I can look back at all of the progress that I've made, the friends that I've met and all of the techniques that I've learned. This is the perfect excuse to just go wild, make things for other people, use up some of your stash yarn and just get into the holiday spirit. So again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and click like and if you want to stick around, then hit that subscribe button. And yeah, welcome to our little knitting family. I hope you have a lovely week. Bye.